Boys and girls, I have a story for you in Van World. And this is how it goes. Those infamous roof pins. I ordered them and uh, lo and behold, they showed up and uh, or presented themselves as delivered. Now I'm in, or the place that they were being delivered to was Mayor Thorpe, Alberta. Lo and behold, they showed delivered in Bonneville, Alberta, which is 300 or 230 kilometers away. So anyway, in the process, I try to locate these things. I've got an American tracking number from eBay, and uh, it's uh, four letters and eight numbers. I go to Canada Post, they don't recognize it. Uh, I see that uh, DHL has given them to Canada Post in Bonneville. Canada Post gave them to Easy Ship, who delivered them to wherever. And so anyway, every time I put that number in, it just disappears. Uh, and nobody else in these services will use that as a tracking number. So anyway, in talking to Canada Post, uh, they claim that the number is not right. When I'm talking to the shipper, he keeps on referring me to eBay as this is the number they provided them who subsequently gave it to me. Now through the eBay tracking, it will present, but it shows it going to Bonneville. But when I get a hold of the post office, there's two locations in Bonneville, they have no clue what that number is because a Canada Post number is two letters, nine numbers, and then two letters. So anyway, uh, even when it has shown delivered, you would think that they would scan it and, and they said it, normally they scan it and it will present a name. I even tried to locate it under the name that it was shipped under. And the shipper keeps on sending me the information that uh, here's the name it was sent to, everything is right, but they have vanished off the face of the earth. And the shipper just keeps on giving me this runaround that, well, this is what eBay gave them. And so when I go to eBay into my purchase history and I try to get a hold of eBay, I think because they have shown as delivered, the button doesn't pop up to contact eBay. So I can't even complain to eBay because the only one I can deal with is a shipper and they're just referring me back to eBay. So I've been two months waiting for these damn things, so I don't know what I'm gonna do if, uh, unless somebody at some point looks at this package because I, I believe after five days, this was on the 8th of September, after five days, they should make a move to return it to the shipper and hopefully somebody with a little bit of eyesight will look at this and go, wait a minute, this is Mayor Thorpe, not Bonneville it should have been sent to. And uh, unless it was given to uh, somebody in a building and it disappeared, but nobody can tell me anything. So you, you talk about a cluster. It's just been vicious and uh, like I say, two months. And uh, the whole thing is waiting on that. What we've done is uh, those roof brackets, uh, once we receive them, uh, of course, uh, they're, they're just a standoff from the uh, pins off of the, uh, the ProMaster. You have to put them on there. But now what you're left with, uh, and I'll show it to you later, uh, uh, there's just uh, basically uh, a plate with two uh, uh, five eighths, or, yeah, five eighths studs. And uh, they're about an inch long. And uh, you have to now, 
attach something to that to do what you have to do. Now, because these uh, uh, solar panels that I've got, oh, I can here a little bit. Okay, so because these solar panels that I've got are 67 inches, I believe pin to pin is uh, 56. So what we have to do now is uh, we have to go across, and this is basically uh, a, a 67 inch uh, board that uh, represents the uh, cross members. So as you can see, it extends beyond the center of the pins. So what we have to do now is cut these to, uh, I believe, 67 and a half, because uh, this uh, roof rack that we're gonna make, it's gonna be 67 inches, 67 and a half inches across, and um, it's gonna be over 12 feet. It's gonna be put on all at once. So it, it's a major uh, undertaking because it's difficult enough to get a couple of bolts to line up but now we're looking at uh, 16 bolts that have to line up all at once. So what we've done, and what we've done is on top of the original one, we put a, a quarter inch plate of aluminum, and then we put a one by one on top of that and bolted that to it. I'll give you a close up here in a, in a few seconds. And uh, now uh, with that one inch, one and a quarter on top of there, it, it does give, as you can see here, uh, clearance across the van of about um, uh, well three quarters of an inch I'd say give or take um, so anyway uh, and you don't want to have it too high because uh, you know you don't want the wind to uh, come over the top of the van and uh, start uh, uh, getting underneath the uh, solar panels if you can you know manage it so anyway uh, the lower the better uh, but not so low that there's no air circulation either because you know, it's a dark van and uh, there's going to be uh, heat just from a solar gain. So anyway, uh, so these will be, uh, this is just a one and a half inch board or one and three eighths inches. And uh, there's going to be a one inch now two going across and then three inch that will sit on the edge. Okay, so here are the pins that we built. Now, as you can see, there's uh, uh, some type of resin plate on the bottom, and it's just got the two studs that you can see in the middle. So, uh, the, the, these are the ones that we built, uh, the aluminum on the bottom, the aluminum plate. I think they're about five and just over five inches long all total. Uh, those pins for the, uh, the mounting system are three-inch centers with a three, uh, five-sixteenths bolt. So uh, what we've had to do is just uh, make our own little thing here. Uh, there's a lot of companies, I guess, that make uh, roof racks for these vans, but what they typically do is they follow this channel. So they just rest on top, and uh, a lot of times I, I think that uh, when you look down, those last three, the middle one, you wouldn't normally use because there's uh, six contact points. But uh, being a fool for punishment... I decided to add another uh, four bolts into the equation just to make my life interesting. So we're going to try and get as much security here as we can and uh, just uh, go along. Now, these brackets, uh, as you see here, I believe we're going to have to take them off again before we actually... I I'm going to do the cutting of the, uh, of the ones across, but what we have to do is make them all up here and... Uh, uh, we're going to put it all up and then we're going to take it down to weld it. That's, that's our plan. And uh, we're going to have to use a forklift to uh, do that. So uh, it's going to be interesting. So anyway, uh, yeah, before we do that, I believe uh, the, the, these uh, one by uh, ones here, uh, they're not yet attached to the plate. So uh, I, I think that um, after I cut these... Uh, uh, ones that go across the width. Uh, these will have to be taken off and uh, welded on both sides so that that is now attached to the plate and it, it's one less um, uh, area to deviate. Here we have the four pieces that are uh, 67 and a half. And what I've done now is I've marked, um, yeah, anyway, I, I, I squared them up on one end, went to the other end, and looked for any deviations in the cut, because I'm using uh, just an abrasive bit. 
uh, uh, fine cutting bit. Um, and so now that I've done that, I've established what side I want up for the sole purpose of, uh, and I've marked them all, both ends have the uh, a U on them. And so now, in keeping with uh, you know doing the mock-up and that, what I have to do is I have to take the underside of these things, and uh, I've got a piece of the uh, three-inch uh, aluminum here. Because now what I have to do is I have to take not the upside but the bottom side and I have to chamfer each one of these uh, units because this aluminum will not allow it to go right in. So what I have to do is I have to take off the corner so that it flips, fits right flush and then when, when uh, that is done and they fit right flush. That'll be uh, going up to there. I don't know if you're actually seeing this, but uh, yeah. So anyway, it'll go right up to there. And then with what is left, this area up here, that's where the uh, solar panels will go. So uh, I think I'll have a quarter, a quarter of an inch uh, between the solar panel and the top of this rail. So anyway, that's the next move. I'm gonna do them all and I'll show you uh, what it looks like when uh, I've got one done. Yeah, as you can see, it's just a matter of uh, nibbling away at it until you're uh, happy with uh, um, the fit. So, and my uh, thing is just to make sure that um, this edge here, which is going to be the upside edge, is uh, that this is actually touching it. So, and, and, you know, touching the bottom here. It doesn't matter if it's a little too much, because as long as they touch th this area in here, uh, it, it'll be, uh, you know, when it's welded, it, it's it, it's going to be a deep penetration. So uh, uh, the, there's there's no concern about uh, the contact. The, this piece is just uh, as a as a demonstration, just for me to do it. Uh, you know, you're you're dealing with 12 feet of this channel, uh, and these just have to be welded into it. So um, yeah, you know, just want to get as close as you can. Anyway, uh, I guess I got another seven to go. Let's get at her. Okay, here we are on top of the van, and we've just put the cross members on these uh, brackets that uh, we built, and I'll kind of show you what uh, we were doing. Uh, so far, so good, but the day is young. Anyway, uh, so the one by ones, we went across at 67 and a half inches to uh, accommodate the uh, panels that we have, the solar panels, and uh, I'll turn the uh, camera around and uh, kind of show you what we got going on here. Okay, so what we've got is uh, we extended the bolts and we uh, lined them up so that uh, from one side it, it, it's, uh, it's always consistent, the, the offset from these, from these brackets. And uh, it turned out to be uh, four and an eighth inches. Of course, depending on your application, it could be uh, whatever. And in, in some cases, you don't even need this stuff because uh, a lot of times these uh, roof rails go, they run right down this... Uh, this line and everything goes in between them because I'm using a house panel and they're, um, they're 330 watt panels, uh, solar panels from uh, Canadian Solar. I'm 67 inches, so uh, it extends beyond the center points of these uh, uh, mounting points. So anyway, we, we uh, put longer bolts in and we drilled, now this indexes this to the bracket. And so now we're gonna bolt this down, uh, scribe it, and then take it off at the point where it goes into the bracket here, and uh, weld it and then bring it back up. And then we've got three inch aluminum angle, and it goes in here. So after we get these welded and put back on, now we're gonna get the angle and bolt it to this. And that's where the fun stuff begins because we're gonna have to set this all up clamp it really well and uh, then use a forklift to take it off and then we'll go down and do our final welding and make sure it's square now we measured across 108 inches for square on this and 
whether it's horseshoes or good management, uh, we're out by a sixteenth of an inch on 108 inches. So anyway, uh, that's what we're doing. And the other consideration is what we're going to do is rock guard it or stone guard, or it's like a bed liner. And uh, uh, the reason for that is that uh, we were gonna look at powder coating or whatever, but apparently uh, aluminum moves so much that it, uh, it will uh, potentially crack the surface. So uh, uh, that, that's what we're gonna use. Uh, I don't know if you're catching reflections there, but uh, it, it's a rock guard and it looks like it's gonna be nice. So anyway, we will continue on and uh, see how it turns out. Yeah, here are the tabs that we uh, installed. And we used a aluminum plate on the bottom to uh, fill in uh, that footprint. And you can see across there and down here. Okay, yeah, there's a good view. So we put in the, uh, the plate, the one by uh, one, uh, the, the Attachment point it had two bolts in it five sixteenths and we drilled a hole in the top because of course we've got to attach it to this one inch We have to get a socket in here and uh, so anyway uh, Then we put these uh, carriage bolts in the middle of it to index everything and Then once we got these done across What we did was uh, we put the aluminum angle on and uh, two bolts to lock it into place. And uh, now, like I said, we're gonna take it off and uh, do the welding, reinstall the, uh, or replace those bolts with carriage bolts uh, so that when uh, we uh, spray it uh, with the uh, zinc coating and the other stuff, uh, it'll look just like it uh, was meant to be. Uh, we still have other aluminum to go across here. Uh, for uh, the solar panels. Now, the distance between that um, max fan, look at the dirt, and this max fan, I've got, uh, I think, an inch and a half to spare. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right uh, tight uh, when, we, uh, when we're done with the panels. So hopefully we're gonna have the panels up here uh, uh, in three, three days. So anyway, that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, it's, it's turning out pretty good. It follows the body line pretty close. On the front, there will be a uh, 52 or 50 inch uh, light bar going across the front. And at the back, there will be a one foot light bar with a backup camera. Here's the template. Uh, yeah, it goes like that. Right there. And then, of course, this comes and sits in this area here. Then we'll put a piece up here because this is what it looks like. Right here. That's the angle piece. And uh, th this will come onto here, onto this plate. And then... Uh, because of this footprint here, that might be open. So what we'll probably do is put a plate up here and uh, then it'll, it'll go right to this edge. So anyway, that's the plan so far, but you know what? We've got to start welding and seeing because uh, we got to do the front and the back and uh, see if there's any appreciable uh, twisting because what we've got is uh, these panels we're going to make a tray for them now and bolt them to the tray. Here they are here, the, uh, it's 3 16 aluminum and it just fits, just fits. So anyway, uh, yeah. And so it'll, it'll hold these and stick out maybe four inches and it'll uh, allow two bolts here, two on the other side 
and two at either ends. And uh, I've only got from front to back an inch and a half to play with between the uh, ceiling pans. So uh, this is definitely gonna be shoehorned in. So, and we're gonna have it all set up and ready to go so that um, uh, we lift it on all at once and then just pull the wires through the solar glands to uh, do the connections, so. Okay, here we are, gonna start the welding. Gonna be crooked. Gonna be crooked, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh. I didn't set it up. Yeah, I know you didn't set it up. Just the front ends. Oh, it sounds good. Oh. Okay, so here we are. All uh, rock guarded on the top anyway. We got to do the bottom uh, tomorrow. We'll wait for it to dry and uh, a lot of work just to uh, get these uh, solar panels up on the roof. But anyway, there it is. Looks good. Yeah. That's why Luminesce charges so much money for their stuff. What's that? There's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason for sure, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, let's go watch a hockey game.